Hey, you're tuning in to the best fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Look, uh, when we post these episodes, if you're one of the commenters underneath the video in the first 30 minutes that we post this episode, so when this episode goes up, comment underneath. If you're within the first 30 minutes and we pick your comment, we're going to hook you up. This is crazy. Check this out. This is what you get. You get this shirt right here. It's a Mind Pump shirt. It's totally free. This stuff, oh, it smells amazing. Justin wore all the shirts we're going to give out right now. If you want to smell Justin You're welcome. in your shirt, put the comment in the first 30 minutes. By the way, uh, somebody actually wore one of these shirts, got laid three times in the next 15 minutes. That's how effective these shirts I are. I have that kind of effect. Leave a comment know. in the first 30 minutes. Of course, subscribe to this channel. Share this with your friends. Um, we hope you're going to enjoy this episode. By the way, if you want to be in one of these live episodes where we answer your question on air, email live at mindpumpmedia.com. So just email there. And also, if you hear us talk about products and you want to see if there's any discounts or hookups, go to mindpumppartners.com. And then finally, if you want to know what this month's workout promotion is, uh, it's the phase two bundle where we took MAPS Aesthetic and MAPS Performance together and made them very inexpensive. It's the phase two bundle, $79.99. It's about six months of exercise program. It's really cool. Uh, go check it out. That's at mapsfebruary.com. Other than that, enjoy the show. Go get it. Do you guys think it's harder to raise teenage boys or teenage girls? Is that a, I mean, is that a real question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, because I got a study I want to talk to you guys about. But before I, I would imagine, come on, it's harder to raise a teenage girl. Yeah. It's not even close, yeah. is it? Really? It's not even close. That Why? Why do you say that? Well, I mean, at least- Without getting into like- you know, like, Without sounding sexist over yeah, it? Like, yeah. I know, Jesus, yeah. I, I don't know if I could do it politically correct. Here's the thing. As a dad, I was scared to death to have a, a, a daughter first. Mm. And uh, one, I'm I'm a man, so having a boy, I feel like right out the gates, we have enough in common that I could figure my way out, mm -hmm. like a, a little bit better, right? Where I don't know what it's like to be a woman, mm. so to parent a woman, well, that auto makes sense. Automatically, it puts me at a disadvantage, right? Yeah. I think Katrina would have a better advantage with a daughter than I would. So that right there, yeah. And then the fear of. What would I do if I had a beautiful daughter that all the men in school want her? And how do I? How would I handle that? That's because because you, you know what the, the problem with that is is you remember how you were yes as of a course boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. of course yeah. and I and this is I also believe in God so I believe he has a sense of humor and he has a way of he's like, gonna give you twin girls yes or next. yeah and they're gorgeous <laughs> and you know what I'm saying and then it just takes you back to like all the thoughts you had about girls when you were a teenage boy and so that scares the shit out of me yeah. so and then you add in the fact of makeup and hair products and stuff everywhere yeah. like i just and yeah. then rebelling on you you know like yeah. you're bringing home some dude hey. that's like all like you know on a bike well yeah, and so girl and girls are smarter that's they Let's are definitely girls, more cunning yes for mind sure. games. especially at that age right at that oh, age, yeah. at that age i feel like there's a major gap yeah I, you can read your typically you can read a teenage boy pretty well oh my mom used a to teenage girl can my mom run circles around her dad my mom <laughs> used to say that about all of us boys she'd say you know anytime i i, I was lying she said i'd have a big sign on my forehead just says liar liar you know, say, <laughs> but her daughters yes yeah, yeah. she they could look her straight I had a, in the a eye vein in my forehead that would just like pulsate yeah you know? it was just too obvious yeah, we're, yeah so we're dumb and clumsy dude we well, so this so a study came out that's why i'm bringing this up right a study came out that showed this is a funny a funny study that showed that having a teenage daughter increases your risk of divorce by 5%. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Yeah. Now the now the uh, authors of the study wow. said it had to do with the 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 father having uh values that were different than what the daughter wanted to do and then the mother siding with the daughter and that causing uh, a rift mm. in the relationship. So you now here's the deal. When you look at statistics, right? If a uh if a girl if a girl rebels, she is less likely to kill herself or kill others. What I mean by that is she's less likely to uh, become addicted to drugs, uh, drive a car fast, run into someone, get in fights, go to jail. Uh, but she is generally more likely to rebel and yeah. do stuff. Do the opposite speaking. of what you want her to do. So it's like if you have a boy that rebels bad, that can turn real bad. If you have a girl that rebels bad, it's usually a little bit better off. But yeah, I think... I think I'm with you. Like I think having a teenage daughter would just feel harder because I because I'm a guy, so I relate more to the right. to the boy. So I'd be like, okay, I know what's going on here. 
Whereas with the girl, I'd be a little bit more. Well, doesn't that also speak more to the to the couple's relationship of like their value system and how they're in unison and in line with you know how they're presenting that to their kids? Yeah, and I'm not I, and I'm not gonna lie, dude. There's there is a a bit of a a double standard as a father I would have with my teenage boy and my teenage girl. Um, I have to admit that if my teenage boy. You know, wanted to go out to some party and stay till two in the morning, and he's sixteen and stuff like that. I'm less, I'm, I'm more likely to be lenient about that than my daughter. I just feel like I would be more worried about her. Well, where, hit, where him, I would be more like, you know, watch your back, make sure you're smart, don't be stupid, don't do anything dumb. My daughter, I'm not thinking about her. You know, not being smart. I'm thinking about other people past midnight and the stupid shit that they. Well, do you the know, time. so, so here's so here's the thing. Alleys. When people talk about that being a double standard and how it's wrong, I can see their perspective, but there's also reality. And the reality is, a, a, a female is far more likely to be assaulted, is far more likely to be sexually harassed, and uh, just in general, you know, they're just le- they're they tend to be less capable of physically. Uh, defending themselves just right. because they're not uh, as big and strong as boy. So the real, so realistically speaking, I mean that's that is true. If you're being objective, it's like okay, if my daughter's out late at night, she's more likely to potentially get assaulted than my son. But then this this other side, your son is more likely to drunk drive, yeah, more likely do to do drugs stuff. and do stupid risky shit like yeah. jump off a roof into a pool because Yeah, yeah but I, I I feel more Crash comfortable I feel more comfortable having the conversation with my son doing something stupid afterwards and correcting him. Then you can't control some, other people. Then exactly. Then something happening to my daughter that yeah. I fucking can't yeah. live with because I allowed yeah, it to you happen. You raise your voice a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, uh, you know, a, com- a complete disaster. Well, no, I just I mean, you have a you your daughter like let's, like you just said. Okay, my son's more likely let to go. Let's say extreme situations in both, right? Okay, my son is more likely to go uh, commit a crime or do something, and I, because I let him stay out till midnight, mm-hmm. right? He's the, the chances are increased. So that conversation the next morning for me, I can live with that of like, what the fuck did you do? And da 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 da, and having that conversation. If my daughter is more likely to uh, be assaulted or something happened to her. I can't live with that. I would have a hard time dealing with it that. It feels more that's like not, that's not me sitting her down and being like, "You fucked up." Yeah. You know, something happened to her, and that is more likely you f- to happen. You feel uh, like less control. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of people out there that you can't talk to, right? Versus right. your son or whatever. I know it's just one of the because I have I have I have uh, two boys uh, and then I have a daughter, and I think about this kind of all the time, like. You know, as they get older and they're going out and they're doing stuff, but you got to look at the statistics and see. What, but I just thought this was a hilarious study that, that literally the title was a, <laughs> yeah. having a teenage daughter increases your risk of divorce by. Like, oh, 5%. that makes sense. Now, yeah. here's some more interesting statistics, though. Uh, a a daughter is more likely to take care of their older parents, their elderly parents, than a son is. Do you guys know that? I didn't. Is that true? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's true. So daughter's yeah. more likely to more take care. More compassionate. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the the stereotype, right? Yeah, but the well. but now does does care include financial responsibility too? Because I know in my family, like the uh, the men have taken care of the the parents financially, and maybe the 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 wives or the daughters have done the the bathing and the the cooking and the helping yeah. like that. Have is it is it all in general or is it specific like that? Like no, what is more, what does care mean? Like they're more likely to all of it. They're more likely to be oh, yeah, to take care of and be involved in that kind of stuff. Um, and that kind of makes sense. I mean, obviously, I I does I have I have, like I said, I have a son and a daughter, uh, two sons and a daughter. It's all awesome. I love it, and they're all yeah. they're totally different. And we're now speaking in generalities, but it is pretty, it is pretty funny, and they are very good with typically they advance faster than boys emotionally and with their communication so they are better at reading a room or reading mom and dad knowing how to talk to them and doing that kind of stuff whereas your boys are just like yeah nice try buddy i yeah, know exactly yeah. what you're trying to do right now <laughs> so anyway but i thought that was a funny you that know, is funny that story. is hilarious now yeah. how you are okay so your your son is how old right now 15 and daughter is 11 Okay. And, now yeah. you're so she's like she's st- uh, next year probably. Well, right? she's, next year this is when you probably get the more challenging stuff. Like, she she's getting close, right? Um, I, she's already doing the whole. I mean, and I, I mean again, this is just her personality. So I don't know if this has anything to do with her being a girl, but she definitely has this moody thing when she, especially when she wakes up in the morning. She did this yesterday. I, I woke her up and she's just in a bad mood hmm. for no reason. My son is pretty baseline. Like I like on a scale of one to ten, he's a, he's always a four or five. Like he's always there. 
she bounces between an eight and a three. And sometimes I have no idea which one I'm going to get. So it's like, I went, hey, good morning. I'm like, okay, what's a three today? <laughs> Just going to not talk to her too much and see. Yeah. and see. I think that's teenagers in general, though. Yeah. It can yeah. be that way. Do you guys have any friends with teenage kids and just uh, ever ask them about that? Uh, not teenage yet. Yeah. That's yeah, apparently I, the worst age. It's it's rough, you know. It's just it's it's one of those things like you notice right away that uh, they just don't uh, they don't care as much about uh, you know informing you about what they're doing. Like uh, they're just like very much more to themselves once they get to the teenage years, and they just want to like do their own thing. And you're just a pain in their ass and like embarrass them. And that's all I've heard from my friends that have teenagers. I, I actually wish that you guys would both share more about the challenges. I know you try and you I know you don't like to air out your personal information and or family stuff like but i like selfishly and i'm sure the audience there's people that i would like to hear the things that like you're challenged with with both with the, whatever you're going through with the kids at being a guy who has got a young very young and early and first time father you know i and i just i did an interview uh yesterday with brandon carter for the dilf wisdom thing and uh, you know, asking him questions, and it's it's crazy. Like, there, I'm, I'm talking to him, and I'm like, man, there's so many things that I said I wasn't gonna do that I've already done already. So I'm always curious to like these these things that you guys have foreseen or thought you were gonna do, and then or made a mistake, thought you did, or you try to implement with your kids, and then you failed. Like that stuff intrigues me. I wish you guys would share more yeah, of that. You know, my favorite is, and you'll you'll hear this now too, Adam, is people who don't have kids who <laughs> say this, like, oh, well, if I was a parent. I would always do that. I'd never do that. Or, yeah, that's easy. You should. And you're just like, yeah, okay, buddy. Well, I've already been that guy. So I've already been that guy, right? So I said, there's some things, and I admit that, right? I said, like, oh, I was not going to do this. I was not going to do that. And I've already broken that. So one example of that was um, originally I was like, never TV. Like, TV was not going to be introduced till he's like fucking 15. You know, that was like the, not really. I wasn't really thinking until 15. But I, my thought process was, until he became aware of really what television was and could like you know verbalize it to me and say dad can i watch the show like i was like that's when i'll deal with it until mm. then so long as i could control it i wasn't going to allow it but what ended up happening is that i found the power of it i found the power of it for when i'm doing something right so i've noticed that oh man like for example he went through a phase just like i don't know maybe 3 months ago or so of the like, you know, thinking it's funny to try and, you know, move around when the diaper change time is, you know what I'm saying? Like it's time to change his diaper and he thinks it's hilarious to like get up and run away and roll over. And, <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. And you're like trying to pin him down and he's just, you know, and oh, so it's like, but if I gave him like, if I take the phone and I put like something on YouTube that he likes, I mean, he's, he yeah. freezes. And so for that minute, I can get him to hold still while he's watching what's on the thing, and then I can. Dude, it's crazy how powerful it is. Oh, I, it's I, my my baby boy is four months old, and if a TV is on, it doesn't matter what's on, and he's mm -hmm. too young to know what you know what's on TV. Doesn't matter what's on, he'll be glued. It's the stimulus. It. Oh, yeah. It's and it's like it's wild. You know it's what? It's Too attractive. It is, and you know what's crazy? So I uh, I I talked to Arthur Brooks recently, um, and he said something that I thought was crazy. Right? He said that social media in particular. The study and the data is showing that pretty much at any dose is negative. Pretty much at any dose mm -hmm. is going to be a ne is going to increase loneliness, mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, like all the bad stuff. He said the studies are showing that about anything over thirty minutes a day <laughs> that's nothing causes negative effects. Yeah. I don't know anybody that well, uses social media. Katrina, yeah. that's why I think she's that's why I think she's so blessed. You know, I think she's one of the happiest, most balanced fucking humans I've is ever met. Is she on nothing? Courtney's the same. She Zero. deleted everything too. Wow. Zero. Yeah. She's never she's never had a Facebook, an Instagram, a yeah. fucking Twitter, an Inst Wow. She doesn't do any of that yeah. stuff. Oh, Cuz like what are they doing on there other than like they th you think that they're connecting with their friends. What they're doing is they're comparing themselves against everybody else. Yeah. And every time you do that, it just leads to uh, you feeling insufficient and having some kind of, uh, you know, uh, being depressed about like what you what you're not doing or what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. and so it's just a, I don't know, dude. It's just a cesspool for me. Yeah. Like, dude, for, in terms of like you know stuff I struggle with. Uh, you know, with my kids, like a lot of it is boy energy. I have two boys. They're very much like boy boys, yeah, right? Physical, jumping physical, on shit. like the, the energy is insane. Uh, they always want to wrestle. They want to like punch each other and do stuff to like, you know, physically. 
Uh, and so for me, it's like, I'll go to somebody's house. That's like very like, you know, meek and reserved and like, you know, we just sit and we talk mm -hmm. and, you know, and I'm like, this isn't going to work, <laughs> you know, like this is not the environment. Like you need to have things for them to like grab and smash and, and do things outside. <laughs> and like, dude, like I, I, I struggle all the time going to my in-laws, going to like uh, some of my friend's house that are like very much like, you know, our house is pristine and clean and blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm not going to go to your house again. You know, this is not a place for me to bring my kids because honestly, like it, you, you can reprimand them and I've done this and it's, it's, it's a battle back and forth. Like I'm going to reprimand them. we got to be, you know, quiet and still. And, and so I got to pick battles. I got to pick battles where I'm like, okay, this, this environment, this situation, we're going to act and behave this way. But you know, then you'll get, uh, you know, the, the side eye and all that with like, you know, some people that are just like, Oh my God, like, Bleh. But it's it's their energy. It's where they are, like in their development. Like mm -hmm. they want to go out, explore. They want to, like you know, like uh, not not only wrestle each other. Not only that, they're you, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Which that's got to be such a and, and I love hearing that. And like, yeah, because when we invite Justin over, we have to have stuff for him <laughs> yeah, we to do yeah, bubble tape. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, sections, you know, like they're, locked off. They're also a part of you that you, I, I would imagine as a father, you like and you love of yourself, like that they're, they totally. are really physical and that you can see that they're going to be like a, a very similar version of you. And you don't want to suppress that as a dad. You don't want to be like, change that where like, man, I love that my boys want to, you know, hit the ball and wrestle and do things like that. I don't want to like always be telling them no, because yeah. then, then they're, either one, they're going to, they're going to like, well, there's got to be a compromise too. It can't just be like, well, in this like laying the hammer down on uh, you know making sure that they're like so still and quiet and uh you know following all these like crazy rules like like give them something like give them something fun to do then you know you come up with something then uh that's not going to be destructive uh you, you know if you're going to have all these rules yeah now for me the struggle right now is uh my kids want to just go in the room and just be in the room all the time. And so I have to tell them. Well, you have the big tech son too. Well, right? right. And so I, I do, okay, we're going to be on a break or whatever. Let's turn them all off, come downstairs. And then it's like 30 minutes of them kind of being annoyed downstairs. And so I try to pretend like I don't, okay, whatever. We're just going to hang out and you're just going to be annoyed. Yeah. But then the conversations start, then the games start, then, the, then we start enjoying ourselves a little bit. But that's the challenge right now, especially because they're both – um, you know, my daughter's almost a teenager. My son is a teenager. And if I let them do whatever, that's all they would do. And I'd never see them. Now, looking back, do you think that some of that has to do with how much freedom you gave them early? And now you're in this weird dichotomy of like, okay, I gave them all this freedom for so long. Now I kind of recognize where it's leading. I have to also be careful of how much I restrict so I don't seem like I'm this tyrant father all the time. Yeah, there's that, uh, definitely. And then there's also because they don't live with me uh, all the time. It's half the time. And the the other house that they live in is pretty much unrestricted. So it's it would be such a a, mm -hmm. a, a contrast, right? With a, oh, yeah, massive contrast. It, it already is a contrast, but it would be such a huge contrast if I went way in the opposite direction. And so that's that's always a big uh, challenge. Now, it's going to be easier with the baby because we're starting from scratch. Right. And they're with us, and right. obviously with us all the time. And uh, you know, and, and Jessica's you know full time mom, and she's excellent with that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. But you know, back to the social media conversation. Uh, it, it, we, when you look at it, and I was thinking about this the other day after I, after uh, after Arthur Brooks told me that. You know, I'm looking at social media, and I'm realizing that everybody is acting like an advertiser on social media, whether mm. they mean to or not. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is. Do you trust advertisers 100%? I'm talking about real marketers, like company marketers, right? So like, uh, you know, Monster Energy Drinks is advertising to you or Coca-Cola or McDonald's or whatever. Do you trust them 100%? Of course not. Their job is to totally sell their product, paint it in the best light possible, tell you all the amazing things that will happen if you use their product or associate it with awesome stuff. Like if you drink our beer, hot chicks will show up at your party or whatever. So it's, do you trust them 100%? Of course you don't. Well, everybody on social media is an advertiser, whether they, they realize it or not. Well, Nobody it, is right. being real on, on, on social media. Nobody is posting on there, ah, oh, my kid flunked math today and it sucks. Everybody's posting, 
highlights. And so they're, you're, what you're literally looking at is a bunch of advertisers. They might not be official advertisers, but that's what they're doing. No, that's a great way to look at it. You're either advertising yourself, mm-hmm. right? Self-promoting, yeah. trying to get followers and people to pay attention to you and like your shit. Or you've already uh, you've accomplished that and you have a lot of followers and then therefore you're selling a product. And even if you don't want followers, it's just you want the people to see you and to see you as this as this awesome person and yeah. you get that social clout or whatever. So it's totally fake. You're literally looking at commercial after commercial after commercial. You guys, after commercial. You guys reality TV have to watch Fake Famous, dude. It's on HBO. Right, it's a right. documentary, and they do this they do this experiment. Where they they interview, I think they interviewed like twenty of these like random kids that like want to be Instagram famous or whatever, and they pick like the three least likely. So they're like, you know, there's they had like a like a collegiate level athlete guy, and he was like pretty good looking and he's fit, and they're like, okay, we can't pick him because he <laughs> he could get famous by on his own just because of right. the, his image and what he does. Uh-huh. So they picked like three pretty average kids, and then decided that they were going to try and and build their fame, and they. I mean, it, it's it's a great documentary because they were they, they successful with one of the three. Well, all of them they were they they. It's you got to watch it because all three of them there was different experiences. Like there was actually one kid um, who struggled with it. He's like, I don't I don't want this. He really believed that he should be famous because mm-hmm. for whatever reasons or whatever. And uh, he didn't like that they were, you know, doctoring the images and mm. pretending they were doing these things oh, they were wow. doing. And so his integrity got in the way. And mm. so he was just like, ah, I, I don't want to do this. Like, I want to. So they be- all have like different formulas for each person, or were they like, like, were they paying for ads and, and followers? And so, they, so they did use a little bit of that. So he, they, and they talk about these accounts where you can buy these followers. And by the way, you can buy fake followers that you can also pay for the likes. You could also pay for the comments to make it look like they're actually Jeez. real followers and everything and so the oh, and there's actually business. and it's gotten such big business now that there's companies that uh, are doing it to beat the Instagram algorithm because Instagram is also putting trying in to a, figure it out right to uh-huh. figure it out to keep that from happening so there's always companies ahead of that to make sure it doesn't get caught so yeah it was uh it was really interesting to see some of the things that were I, that I didn't even know existed for example in LA especially this is really popular um, they have a lot of these uh things that are st- like stages to look like you're at some tropical island or to look like you're flying po- private. Oh, it's so no. stupid. And I you, know. It's and big you, business and over you there. rent it by the, the <laughs> half hour and the hour. And oh, this shit, and they, they talk about it. He's like, it was booked for like three months. You know what's so funny about that? You, you know what's <laughs> funny? Crazy. Here's what's funny about all this is Ooh. that, and I don't know, maybe if I was younger, I would I would be that be more That's that crazy, way. Crazy, dude. But I would much rather be extremely successful and you think I'm not rather than you think I'm super successful and I'm not, or even that I am. Like I would like to be the undercover dude that drives the regular car. Well, that's because you have no idea. You're old and wise, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? Go go back to 17 year old Sal. You're young. And you want all the attention. Of course True. not. Yeah, think of insecure 17 year old Sal who doesn't feel good about his body. Ask him if he wouldn't mind having uh, yeah. a, a million followers yeah. and being famous. Like uh, you know, of course. Isn't like, that crazy though? Oh, it is. It's, it's wild. I just ha- I literally just talked to my kids about this yesterday. I said if you could, if I said if I had a magic wand that would make you famous mm-hmm. what you know would you want me to do that and at first my son he thinks he's smart so he's like well you could get famous for bad stuff too so what exactly that was a trick question like, all right <laughs> your all son right. is so you bro know, can't even just answer the fucking yeah. question like, you could get famous for murdering people so i don't know so i'm like all right listen <laughs> and let's just i said yeah. let's just imagine you were famous for something good like you're an athlete or a musician <laughs> so they're, and they're both like well yeah and i said well how come he's like well because you know, people know you, they like you, you get all the stuff, whatever. I said, man, you do not want fame. It's fake. Everywhere you go, people know, are watching you. They know, they, they care about all in your business and they will turn on you faster. Yeah, they'll turn on you. That's Very the thing. fast. And I literally had this conversation with them. I said, yeah. it's the last thing you would a- actually want. In fact, the, what would be awesome is to be successful and accomplished and nobody know. And then I used the example because I said, how would I give, the, how would I explain this to them in a way that makes sense? So I said, do you know who uh, Daft Punk is? And so my son's, and I was like, he's like, yes. I'm like, all right, thank God you know who these guys are. I said, do you know what they look like? Yeah. He goes, no, they only have their helmets they on. They the helmets. I said, it's the most brilliant thing yeah. ever. That and the blue man group. Yes. I said, nobody knows who they, who they are. They only have helmets on. They're super successful, and they can walk around and live a regular life, except for maybe the most hardcore fans. 
nobody knows what they look like. Yeah, it's such a great business model too. Like that Blue Man Group, they were able to then rotate uh, other replicate. Dudes. Yeah, yes. the, their same show with other people and like and none the wiser. It. Yes. Yeah. 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 What a brilliant. You way should have to do them it. watch the fake famous because and I don't. I'm want, gonna watch. It I don't. Want, I don't want to like ruin the whole show for everybody. So there's a lot of cool stuff in it to go watch it. Um, but. There isn't. There is like this. Uh, the story arc that happens to the girl who does right. So, there is it. There one of them uh, within three months' time, they build her into over a hundred thousand followers from basically like nothing. She had a few hundred wow. or whatever, and it, and she starts getting products. People send in her products. She actually gets some companies sponsored, and you get to see the, her rise in, in in you know Instagram fame, and she's l- loving it. I mean, she is eating it up at the beginning, mm-hmm. and but then all of a sudden it Just comes skinny tees and waist. Well, Here we go. eventually it comes down. You know, after that first initial rush of being quote unquote famous and getting all this free stuff. Then this like feeling, and you could see it on the, in the documentary, just this lack of. I'm gonna watch it with my kids. Purpose, yeah, just like, uh, you know, what am I doing? You know, no. what am I doing? And I don't. And so it's it's really neat to watch these kids go through. It's a cool. Experiment. I'm gonna watch it. Speaking of famous, uh, Tom McDonald. This guy feel, seems like he came out of nowhere. Yeah. And is now He's crushing like number one in the charts. Very controversial rapper, yeah. extreme. Which I, I enjoy controversy. He's completely through. countercultural in terms of like the the culture of today. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's uh, I think that rap has been ready for it for a long time. Yeah. Uh, for well, the, that's the that's I feel isn't like that, he opened a huge door now. But isn't that the roots of rap? Rap has always been, and not always. It first started out. Yeah. yeah first buck, is, buck the system. Yeah. It started out as this party type of thing, but then eventually it got into this like we're gonna talk and be counterculture. We're going to say stuff that's going to piss people off. Yeah. That's like the roots of it, right? Yeah. So I feel like he's just going back to the roots a little bit. Kind of, but it, from an, a different view, right? A different viewpoint. What I think is that rap has grown so big that there there's a lot of people that listen to it that don't align with a lot of the messaging of rappers today. Mm. Yeah. You guys, you guys, man, this is a debate you and I get into. We were getting into years ago on this podcast of all rap sucks today. It's all about <laughs> you know <laughs> big booties and pills and guns and like drugs and like this. You're like, and but there's some truth to that right? right like i don't think you guys were completely wrong with that i was trying to make the case that there are some still rock rappers out there that are artists and that are actually putting out really yeah, thought- there's a handful of them yeah still. there's still some thought-provoking content that's being delivered yeah. but nothing like this there hasn't been something from not at this level at least right so maybe there are some small-time rappers yeah. like but he's J. cole and logic and, yeah i told you, know, you i like, like i like guys like that and some of the stuff that they're rapping about but boy, he is uh He's pushing all the buttons. Yeah. He literally has a, a like a chart of the buttons that yeah. you, that say don't push and he's going well, I guess what the the main thing that I respect about what he's doing is is it's completely independent. Like he yes, decided to and I haven't really seen this from the rap uh community quite as much other than like Wu Tang clan, right? They 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 decided to not go uh you know, you know, get signed by some major label and mm-hmm. do it all on their own and grassroots and I love that. Uh, he's doing the same thing, but he's just two people. It's just him and his girlfriend. His girlfriend shoots all his videos. He he does all the lyrics, all of the beats and everything himself, which, you know, like, I, like personally, I think, like, you know, the beats, I would like to see somebody else kind of come in and help him with that. But otherwise, like, you oh, know, I, I think it's awesome. I have some critiques. Like, I've listened to all his stuff now multiple times, and, uh, you know, it's – it's not something like you to this day. You could catch me with my windows down and and bumping some Tupac. Like mm-hmm. just oh, yeah. the the hook on it, the chorus on it is is fire. It sounds good. Everything yeah. right. He's got very thought provoking lyri- his lyrics and his bars are sick. But yeah. his hooks and his chorus and it's a little bubblegummy. Like yeah, right. you won't catch me rolling my window down like <laughs> bumping it. No, just, no, 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 so that's where he misses right. And yeah. and maybe that's because like your point, like he's not produced right. He doesn't yes. have somebody who. But is that badass. also makes him hard to cancel. But he's that's, exactly that's he's right. untouchable. Yeah, and he can say all these things that I know not. You know, there, there's a, a lot of people that will respond to that and be like, oh wow. Yes, like this is interesting. Yeah, I, I I like the fact that he's just pushing all the buttons. Yeah, I I, I appreciate it when people do that because it takes a lot of guts, you know, because oh, he's yeah. a target. Yeah, he's gonna be a target, but he's blowing up. He's actually he's been on the news because uh, what was his last one? Was a fake uh, fake woke? Well, canceled, canceled is his yeah. last one. Yeah, but he, no, the one that got him fake like, woke is what woke everybody up. Yeah, right? yeah nobody yeah. was really. He's been doing it now for a couple of years. And his videos have got, you know, a million or so. But it took a long time for those all to get up to a million. He Now, he seems like an interesting person. So from what I gather, he grew up in a normal middle-class house, and he's Canadian, 
but then he had some mental illness, and I'm only getting that from his yeah. so, from a song. I think he lived in South Central, in L, down in L.A. As far as I like heard on some of his uh, when he was talking about his videos and whatnot. Yeah, very interesting. I'm not sure. And he looks like a uh, death metal uh, he definitely, performer. Definitely. Like if I saw like him, I think like rocker. yeah. And he's like, I do music. I'd be like, oh, you yeah. death metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I work out to your music. But, but, it's like a mix between that and like what a mumble rapper would look like, but he's totally not. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah anyway, yeah. hey, I got it. I got a study on uh, an interesting study on weed that I think will interest you, Adam. You know, I like that stuff. Yeah. 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 So. So the study itself was talking about weed's impact on uh, business or entrepreneurship, I should say. So the title, this was in Science Daily. Great, By the way, great website if you ever mm. want to just look up studies and be a total nerd about this kind of stuff. ScienceDaily.com is where I like to go oftentimes. But uh, the, title good, of, the, <laughs> the title of this is Cannabis Use Both Helps and Hurts Entrepreneurial Creativity. This is, the source was Washington State. <laughs> University. We need to just study creativity for this. up, <laughs> productivity down. No, yeah, so okay. So I was going to ask you guys, what do you think that means? So one hundred percent, I agree. So you think that. it means creativity is up, but productivity goes down? Yeah, I definitely think that's what happens. That's okay, for sure. Well, so the title is it helps. So they're they're specific. They're they're speaking specifically to creativity. So I agree with you guys on that. But they're saying cannabis helps and hurts entrepreneurial creativity. Mm. So it helps creativity, but it also hurts creativity. So do you guys have any ideas what the, what they may mean? Well, I mean, I think that it could... Okay, so uh, a little bit of it, I think, can make it very creative. A lot of it could make you dumb. So I think that, uh, you know, or think your it, think your ideas are much better than what they really are. <laughs> yes, so I, yes. I think there's a threshold of... That's cre- happened to us a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You look at the next day, that was way yeah, too creative. Yeah, right. There's yeah. been times where I'm not going to lie, where I've, I've been smoking and I'm taking notes and I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait <laughs> to share this with a guy. And in the morning I review yeah, it and I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm not going to share It's like that. one out of 10 usually. <laughs> you know, like, oh, that one I'll keep. Top, top ramen soda. It sounded like a great idea <laughs> yesterday, but now it's not that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, okay, so here's what they found in the study. Good guess. But uh, and this one caught me off guard, but it makes perfect sense. The study found that cannabis using entrepreneurs generated uh, more creative business ideas. Okay, okay. But the feasibility of the cre- of these uh, ideas was lower. So although they had okay. more creative ideas that were kind of out there. Mm-hmm. The feasibility of them was. Oh, lower. that's brilliant! I mean, yeah. that just your uh, top ramen analogy yeah. right there is. Yeah. They didn't a, stick in reality. It's a perfect example because some somebody still will be like, "That is brilliant." And then you yeah. realize how hard that would be to probably yeah. create that. Make yeah. that cost <laughs> cost a million dollars just to make top ramen flavored Pepsi. You know, what I'm saying? it is. It's hilarious. I also think yeah. though, although cannabis has been shown to improve certain aspects of creativity, I do think that thinking you're going to be more creative oftentimes is what does it right. So mm-hmm. I know for us, we actually create an environment for ourselves there's this little there's this yeah, it's like this, a ritual yes there's this routine and ritual that we've done in the past especially when we used to create a lot of our programs where we would we would go stay somewhere at least an hour away because the conversation would start in the car we'd go to this place and then we would focus on this idea far away from home or whatever and it tended to spark creativity and then it was just the routine of it right the routine of it yeah, made- i think the intent going into it makes the most difference you know if you're if you're especially in to get into group flow i think like having all of those steps and like having something that you can repeat uh, to, to, to be able to get to that point where, you know, you feel like it's all kind of coming just naturally, uh, you know, that group flow, is, it, it definitely requires a lot of that ritual. Hey, I have a question for you, Sal. Uh, you are the last one to jump on the uh, Caldera bandwagon. Mm. I know that I sold Justin on it, and he went from yeah, uh, ashy to classy, and mm. I'm wondering if <laughs> comments <laughs> Almost all day right. long. Just beaming. Well, okay, let's, let's look, at, look at my face, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. does it look, does the skin look great? Yeah, you do look good. It looks pretty good, it right? Did. Yeah. I have been using it. Oh, I, I had it right oh, here. Show the YouTube people. Yeah, so I have been using it, and uh, one of the reasons why I started shaving my beard, all you YouTube commenters who say grow your beard back, thank you, <laughs> um, is because I've been feeling like my skin is really good. This stuff is works. Now, here's the interesting thing about it. I didn't use it before because my skin, so you had the psoriasis stuff. Right. Justin had the alligator skin, the dry skin. Yeah. I tend towards oily skin. Right. So I'm like, I don't want to put an oil on my skin because it's already- Double I, oil. It's already yeah, olive oily, right? Yeah. Just, it's a better term. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, right? But you know what it does? It balances it out. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So what they put in there, 
has got this this really good balancing effect on skin. So I put it on mine, and I don't get oilier. If anything, I just yeah. You get don't more look balanced. oily. You don't look oily. No, no, no. Oh, I'm not yeah. shiny. Yeah, no, you're not no. shiny. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Kind of I feel like I look shinier than you do with it on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can you tell? I mean, mine's on. That's like my, my ritual before we get on. No, YouTube. you don't look shiny. I don't. No, no, no. Just handsome. It just, yeah. Uh, just, ex- just yeah. We don't wear any makeup. I yeah. mean, it's crazy. <laughs> it's the closest we do <laughs> to wearing makeup. <laughs> yeah, we're on camera. We don't wear makeup. Yeah. Remember yeah. when that was a thing? Like you could not go on camera. People still do. Everybody does. Yeah, people make People still do. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to sell out any of Dude, our, no our podcasting friends, but I know people that do that. And they have those like halo lights like right on them. And now everything. that's super big and popular. I don't care about that. I, yeah. The makeup part, though, I refuse. Like, oh, I, I, like you're going to powder never. my face and stuff. That's just yeah. weird. Don't say that. Yeah. Never say that. I'll never. go on Janie Jones just raw. You got a yeah. book tour probably coming up pretty soon here. So we'll Are see they going to do that if I get on a TV show? I mean, show? yeah, you go on like Good Morning America. They're, putting, they're putting makeup on oh, you. No, they're not. And we're oh, never yeah, letting bro. you live it down. Are yeah. they really? Eyeliner, makeup. You got like lipstick. No, no, no. Hold on. Little cheek stuff. I don't know if they do that. Go lipstick. All that stuff, dude. Come on, bro. You ever seen Ryan Seacrest? They put lipstick on them? Of course, dude. No, they don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> Why is your voice so high? It just happens. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he talks about lipstick. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, so eyeliner, I might be able to get You behind. should let Justin do your makeup. Huh? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> of yeah. all people. He's going like, to look like a clown after Jay, I'm done. <laughs> Justin's the least, like, he's the least sensitive. Like, you know, so he's going to just mess oh, me I'm, up. I'm going to over-apply. Actually, it. you'll make me look like uh, like, a, like a rock band or something. Oh, like uh, yeah, yeah. No, so I can sister. get behind eyeliner, okay, because. One Halloween, I dressed up as a vampire. Remember the one I did with Jessica where we were like sexy vampires? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I put the eyeliner on, and I was like, dang. Damn, yeah, I like, like this. A little, I'm, I'm mysterious. A little, a little bit. I felt God, like I'm yeah. handsome. I felt like David Blaine Prince, yeah. you know, like kind of in between <laughs> the two. All so like, could do magic. If I was a single dude, maybe I'd put this eyeliner on, just go out at night, yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. You, hey, you brought up mar- marijuana. We get asked about. Hey, Doug, what is? Okay, can, what is the rules for me? I, like, I, I feel like every time I bring up stock, I get in trouble here. So, it, what I, I have to, I have to one say I own the stock. Two, I'm I not, don't know the rules. Oh, you talk don't. to the attorney. Yeah, well, I don't know. well you're <laughs> the one that makes sure we don't get sued here. So if I if I say I I own the stock and then. You have to disclose that you own it, and also make sure you tell everybody you're a trainer, not a, not a trader. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a trainer, not yeah. a trader. I don't know anything about stock, but yeah. people continue to still ask. Anyways, uh, you brought up marijuana. Aferia is a company that I bought uh, probably- Yeah, they're crushing right now, aren't they? Yeah, they've been doing well for a while. I bought them a little over a year ago, um, and what I liked was the, the other companies that they were acquiring, because I could see what they were building towards because of- uh, you know, cannabis infused drinks. And so I know they, they got like a, a seltzer water. Oh my God. You want to know what's just funny? So I pulled them up right now, right? So I bought them yesterday because we were talking and I had to get out of my, my GW pharmaceutical position, which th- that's because they, they, they sold to another pharma company. Oh, right. And the deal was 80% cash, 20% stock. So if I didn't sell, I'd end up with 80% cash anyway. So I sold it all and I put some in Etheria. But you know what's funny? I just clicked on them right now. What? And there's a little, there's news uh, Tell me behind news, them. Not bad news. Well, first of all, they're up right now, as we're speaking, they're up 14%. And yesterday they were up 20 something percent. Boom! Okay. So here's the thing. Ready for this? Mm. Here's the article huh. Cannabis stock jumps or soars as the Reddit crowd that spiked GameStop jumps in. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, so the no. Reddit crowd oh, dude. has now jumped in Yikes. on this stock, yeah. which, which, Jesus, it's just going to blow which, it. The powers you, that be are going to monitor that like crazy. Did you guys hear about the kid who committed suicide? And they're oh, that's su- so and the, sad. The, pa- the parents are suing Robin Hood. So sad, dude. Oh, oh bro. First of all, you look at this kid. Oh, he wrote a letter, too. And you could tell he's like this this kind of like nerdy kid. He's 20. Yeah. Good he's kid. A baby. He, they... Robin Hood sent him a message that said that he owed them seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something like that. Oh my god! And it was a mistake. Robin Hood fucked up. He didn't owe them money. In fact, he might have actually made money, but he was so distraught that he had tried trading and lost all this money. Yeah, because they locked it. Remember when they locked it all? It was after that what huge spike. A horrible. Story. They locked everybody that uh. had GameStop, and so the thing just kept plummeting. And so he thought that not only did he that lose he actually money. lost yeah, that, that much money, uh, and that his parents me. would have to pay it. It was something like that, right? Something out of tons of money. Yeah. yeah. How sad. That's terrible. Oh, that breaks my heart. So yeah. what do you think? So th- this is what this makes me a little nervous about about stock right now. Is that is exactly that? Like so. I, w- there's another stock that I bought, um, COUV, who is a, a, a company that I was 
they bought like I don't know. How, they're not on the. They're on the. What, they're a pink, the yeah, they're a, they're a pink sheet. Right. But they got frozen today too, and because of an abnormal spike over this last week, and so because of this Reddit thing that's happening, I, is the SEC starting to crack down more? And if they lock you from trading mm -hmm. out, like right now, I'm like I'm concerned because I'm up like oh god, I want to say that that stock is up like a hundred and something percent. I'd like to cash some of that out and you walk. Can't. I can't because right it's, it's, it's frozen. Yeah. Right. So are we going to start seeing this happen a lot with these stocks that surge all the time just because Reddit gets in there and fucks with it? Like I don't know. All I, mean, I know is I'm happy I bought a stock that Reddit's be. boosting <laughs> now, so it makes me want to take it out real quick and well, realize that's what, my game. Well, and that's what I'm wondering is like, is that the move? Is like, do you because GameStop is is gone back to where it was, hasn't it? It's I don't know if it's gone back mm. to where it was. It I definitely know, went down. AMC its, did right because I know that was the other one that they fucked with. And I can, it went, let me look up GameStop and see where they're at right now. Yeah, tell me they, where they're at. They were, uh, well, I mean, they're still higher than they were. I mean, they were at four dollars. They're at fifty four, but they peaked at one point at two hundred and twenty dollars. So even if you still have it, you're still way up. What about AMC? Tell me what happened with that uh, one. AMC, let me look them up. I don't know. Uh, AMC is still, well, they're now nah, they're back down to five something. And their their previous high way back in 2019 was at 16. So I don't think they ever, they, they never reached that previous high anyway. Wow. Yeah. So, but yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's an interesting game right now. Yeah. And how are they going to fight it? You can't, like, what are you going to do, right? Keep freezing the... It's definitely made an impact, so we're starting to see, like, how this is all kind of turning I out. I feel like investors are going to start putting spies in into these groups, and it's like, let me know what the chatter is so I can cash out, I can figure out a way oh, to capitalize yeah. on it, oh, yeah. because they single-handedly exploded several stocks. I know. What happens when the big guys that have all the money that are getting pissed right now, right, they start, they start like, using Infiltrating that, it. Well, yeah, start using that to their advantage. Yeah. Be like, okay, just exactly what you're saying right now. Let's let's get some people inside. On they these. don't need to. They already play their own games, dude. Yeah, they have their own games of doing that. Yeah, shit. but they don't like to lose. Yeah, they don't yeah, so, like to lose. Yeah, sure they, <laughs> they will do it. I yeah, I'm with Justin. Yeah, they dude. will do it. They, billions of dollars Those is billions fuckers, of dollars. Dude. Yeah, like, <laughs> even if it's a hundred bucks, they're just like no. Yeah, they'll find a way. <laughs> now's <laughs> my money. Yeah. <laughs> Reddit's off all the servers. How did that? What happen? now? Your family that's on it. What are they saying right now? Are they? I mean, is there? I was talking to my buddy this this morning who drives me crazy. Right, my my good friend who did, likes to speak in code when I ask him direct questions about like what is he doing with his money. Um. Yeah, you know, are they are they pulling a bunch out? Are they leveraging with other stuff like bonds and gold and silver and REITs? Like, what are they doing to protect themselves of this potential bubble? Or I just mean, I think they're just playing the daily game because they're all like hardcore investors, but they all do think that a big correction is is on the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. they all pretty much agree that that's that that's on the way. So I should ask them more specifically, like how much of my position should be cash? That's what I mean. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some advice like that from somebody that is much smarter than I am in this space to say, listen, where what we've seen over the last seven years, the run that we're at, everybody, I think everybody's in agreement. What goes up must come down, yeah. that we'll see some sort of a correction. The question is, you know, will it be anywhere like the correction in 08 or will it be just this subtle correction? And then also, you know, if you're into this for the long game that you're not looking just to make a buck over a year or two and you're, you plan to stay in no matter what, what are some stocks that you can yeah. leverage yourself on so your overall portfolio what doesn't are the get solid ones? Yeah, well, so it doesn't get crippled, right? Yeah. And the yeah. what, 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 only thing I know of is thinking gold, silver, bonds, REITs, because if all those, if, right. the, if the, cr the stock market crashes, those things should probably go There up. are indexes you can invest in that go up when volatility goes up. I'll find out what the names of those are and, and, and see what those look like. Yeah, no. And that, see what that, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, it, it being competitive with you guys and all that stuff, it is annoying to me that I, I can't enjoy Magic Spoon like you guys do because of the dairy, <laughs> but those peanut butter uh, Magic Spoon bars that uh, well, Jerry you made. You saw I had like four or five of I had a little piece of one. Holy cow! So that did, is, did oh, anybody? So delicious. Did anybody? So ask, like Rice Krispie treats, yeah. Right? Made with all she did was peanut butter, peanut butter honey, honey, and then the chocolate flavored. So it's like a high protein candy. Is yeah. what it tastes like. It was like. so good. I mean, it is so it's like good. a Rice Krispie treat, but peanut butter. Oh, oh my god! Oh. I, know, I watched so him yesterday. We were right before the podcast. I'm watching him over there, like scoop him up in his lap. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Dude. <laughs> yes, he was, dude. I <laughs> Justin, uh, look at that whole thing was full just yesterday, bro. I had like four or five, dude. You know, like what? What do you want from me? Yeah. <laughs> she made them, you know, out of love. And yeah, so I'm a, just trying to acknowledge that. That's uh, Justin's yeah. looking beefy these days. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. And the sound. Yeah. <laughs> the sound you make. Every time I flex, it does that. All right. Our first question is from Bella in New York. Hi, Bella. How can we help you? Hi. Thanks so much for having me. Um, so I recently just started a reverse diet 
and I'm wanting to know if I'm sort of on the right track and what should my expectations be or what should I anticipate throughout the process? I just feel a little bit lost. Okay. That's a great question. Um, a lot of people ask about reverse dieting because obviously we've talked about on the show helps speed up the metabolism, can help if you've come off of a long period of cutting your calories. Sometimes it can help with hormone balancing and all that good stuff. But I do need to ask you a few more questions before I can help you out. Um, number one, what are you doing for your workouts? Um, so I have the RGB bundle. So I did MAPS Anabolic, and now I'm on phase two of MAPS Performance. Um, and I've done weightlifting for a bit before I started the programs. Excellent. Okay, so you're obviously following good programs. Are you seeing any strength gains and performance gains? Uh, yeah, actually. I'm, my strength has gone up in pretty much everything except uh, squats, but I think that's just because I've been doing a lot more mobility, so um, just bigger range of motion. But other than that one lift, everything else has gone up. Now, did you, um, did you see that, Bella, when you were... Yeah. Sorry, did you did you actually see the strength gains going up while you were in a cut or since you've been reverse dieting? Um, since I've been reverse dieting. Okay. Well, I've seen some small strength gains when I was in a cut, but it was like months. <laughs> okay. And what now what is your what is your purpose for going on a reverse diet? What what's the goal for you? So, I was gaining body fat or just weight on a pretty low calorie diet, I was consistently eating about 1400 calories um, for a couple years. So I just kind of want to get out of that funk. And, um, you know, I've consistently worked out. So I'd kind of like to see the results come to fruition. Okay. So you felt like your metabolism just needed a kick um, into gear. And so that's your, that's your goal for reverse dieting? Yeah. yeah okay. Exactly. okay. And now how are you performing it? How many calories are you increasing on a, on a weekly or monthly basis? So I started increasing when I did a dip, when I started a new phase was sort of how I timed it a little bit. Um, and so right now I'm at around 1800 calories and I've just been increasing, um, by like, 100, 150 um, each phase. Oh, cool. So a phase typically for people who don't know lasts anywhere between three to uh, four weeks. So about every three to four weeks, you're going up about 100 to 150 calories. And now you're up to 1800 calories. You've gotten stronger. Have you gained any weight on the scale? I don't, I don't exactly know because I don't have a scale, but I do feel like my clothes are a little bit tighter, um, which I guess has sort of made me a little nervous. Um, because that's not my end goal, but I'm trying to, you know, trust the processor. Yeah. So what could help with that would be a body fat test, um, because that could tell you if you're gaining muscle, uh, losing body fat, or gaining both. I think you're on the right track uh, in terms of increasing the calories. You can go very slow with this, you know. So if you feel like increasing your calories is starting to put more body fat on your body, then you could always pause. You could even do a slight cut and then go back to the reverse, but this can be a very slow process. You know, I've worked with people and where we reverse them on and off. And what I mean by on and off is we'll increase calories. Uh oh, they're gaining a little too much body fat. We'll bring it down a little bit and then start back up in a few weeks. And it can take, you know, up to a year or yeah. more just to get to that point where you feel like things are roaring and things feel good. Especially, you know, here's the thing that 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 is a clue to that. You were at 1,400 calories for a long time. So it might just take you a little while. Mm -hmm. To get to get them to go up in, in the right way. Okay, that's helpful. And so, how do you know when to stop the reverse, or what cues are, or are there cues? How long have you been that? on the reverse diet? Just just for for information. Um, about sept late September. Okay, I I'd like to know. How, can can I get an idea of about where you are? I know it's uh, totally rude to ask weight, but I, I I would like to know about what you weigh. Even though you don't weigh consistently, do you have an idea of around you your weight? Yeah, I weigh about one thirty five, but I'm only five feet tall. Okay, so I mean, eighteen hundred calories is not bad. I mean, fourteen hundred is a little low, but eighteen hundred is not bad. I know typically we recommend that people don't become slaves to the scale and the, and they don't. Uh, weigh themselves twice a day every day but I do think when you're reverse dieting I do think there's some value to this and it's not like oh my god I'm I'm getting fatter I'm gaining a bunch of weight but just to keep an eye on it because 
when I'm reverse dieting, my goal is to not see the scale really shoot up too much. Now, if it goes up a pound or two, I'm not worried about that at all. I also don't want to see my my scale go down. If you're reverse dieting and you're adding calories and I'm actually losing weight, you know, then I'm going to keep bumping my calories. So the scale does have some value when you're trying to do something like this or body fat testing. It's just easier to have a scale than it is a body fat test. I mean, if you have access to check your body fat every couple of weeks, then that would have value. But the goal really is here is that, okay, we would like to increase our calories, whether that's 50 to 100 a day or as high as two to 200 a day over a period of time without seeing a huge you know, swing in the scale up or down. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for when I'm reverse dieting is, can I continue to add calories into my diet and not see my scale do this this huge fluctuation. And by huge fluctuation, I mean consistently putting on, you know, two pounds or more every single week. If you go one to three pounds and you kind of go up and down, that's a good place to be. That means you're kind of hovering around probably what maintenance is for you and you're starting to speed the metabolism yeah. up. You can keep that maintenance and also see strength increase. That right. And you're really doing well. Yeah, so some signs to look for. Strength going up, energy improving, Libido improving, better sleep, skin, hair, all the signs that your health is doing well are great signs of a reverse diet. So you should start, even your appetite going up. Uh, if a reverse diet's done properly, the person's building strength and muscle, sometimes they'll actually start to get hungrier. And that's actually a great sign. That means things are, are moving in the right direction. Things that tell you that maybe you're going up too fast, like Adam said, a lot of weight gain not feeling good, digestive issues, uh, you know, sleep starts to get worse. Essentially, your health starts to kind of go down. That may be that you're, you're, because your calories have gone up too fast. Also keep in mind, if, we are, if we're increasing calories, right, that means probably carbs are going up, sodium's probably going up, maybe even fluid intake is going up. So it's very normal to see, uh, see your body put on a little bit of size. So if you notice your clothes are fitting a little bit tighter, that's also normal during this process. Now, excessively, if you're going up, you know, pant sizes every few weeks, we're definitely increasing too fast, but it's very normal too for you to be holding a little bit of extra water, for you to see a little bit of more weight on you. But the key really that I'm looking for when I'm looking at my own body or I'm assessing a client is if I'm putting on muscle, it should look good. Like, so when you look at yourself, even though you might have gone up a little bit of weight or clothes fitting tighter, you feel good about how you look in comparison to maybe what you look like two months ago. You're probably heading on the right track, especially if you're seeing markers like Justin alluded to, like strength going up in the gym. If strength is going up, you feel good about the, the way you're looking as far as muscle being built on your body, you're probably heading in the right track. Okay, great. This was so helpful. Thank you guys so much. No awesome. problem. Thanks Thank for calling. Yeah, have a nice day. Yeah, that reverse diet is such a, a mind screw for a lot of people, right? Because oh, yeah. uh, you're going to see the scale go up a little bit. I mean, you could be building muscle. Water could be going up. Um, and usually the people that have to do a reverse diet are the ones that are usually chronically trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So now you're telling them to eat more food. Um, and so it's it's challenging. It can be very, very challenging. But the rewards are tremendous. I mean, I've gotten people's metabolisms to change so much. And then when they go to try and get lean, it's so much easier because now they're working with so many more calories that their body's burning just on its own. Yeah. And then just the length of time and the, you know, taking a real gradual approach to it, it too is another psychological hurdle. Uh, a lot of clients have like to, to completely change their focus from trying to lose weight now to just gradually, uh, you know, get their metabolism to go back up is, is pretty, pretty challenging. Well, this is also too, where I see a lot of value in having a coach or another pair of eyes to be, uh, right. you know, instead of yourself, right? Cause you, the, the mind plays games. It's hard when, to be objective. It man. is very hard to be objective when, when you are somebody who's tried to lean out or lose body fat or lose weight. And now you're doing a reverse diet and you see scale going up, you see clothes getting tighter. I mean, for me, like when I was coaching a client, I wanted to see, I wanted to see my clients every week check in and I'd make them, you know, pose in the same outfit at the same time of the day. And as I'm adding calories, I'm the one who's looking at their body from mm -hmm. the week over week and saying, Hey, we're doing great. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. care that the scale went up three pounds this week. I'm looking at you and I can tell yeah. that we're focused on performance metrics. Yeah. Right? Look at what you're doing. Yeah. I can see your, you, we're, we're, our bench press is up. Our squat is up. I can see your shoulders. 
shoulders and your legs are building muscle. So I, I think I like right where we're at, you know, or, you know, the other side, I see that, oh, we look kind of flat. She could definitely use some more calories. Oh, we actually stayed the same weight or lost a little bit of weight. Let's bump it up a little bit. So this really helps to have another person to do this with you, especially a professional who can kind of look at them mm -hmm. and kind of help them through this process. Cause I can see how it's tough when you are reverse dieting for the first time, especially when you're somebody who's been in a cut trying to lose the, the mental game. Our next question is from Sam from California. Hey, Sam, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Awesome to uh, talk to you guys. You guys are awesome. Hey, hey thanks, dude. Um, yeah, so my question is, so I'm a collegiate catcher at uh, Cal State Monterey Bay um, in my senior year right now, um, and I've had two knee surgeries, meniscus tears, um, I tore them about three years to go back to back years. Um, only about 10% of the meniscus was torn and that just scoped it out. Um, so they just took out the torn part. I was only on crutches for about a day for both the surgeries. Um, I was able to come back uh, physically from the surgeries really quick. Mentally it was kind of a different story. Trusting my body's trusting my knees. Um, I've been able to avoid serious injury in the last kind of two years and my knees have been fairly healthy, but um, I think because of the meniscus tears, my knees get really inflamed really easily. Um, they swell up. The back of the knee um, gets really tight. The front of the knee gets really tight. Um, and I found that stretching my quads is the best way to kind of mitigate um, any kind of tightness or swelling. Um, but I was just, you know, curious if there's any ways I could kind of change my, I don't know, nutrition plan, if there's any more uh, inflammatory um, things I can throw in or any, you know, stretches or exercises that could really help. Uh, knee tightness and swelling. Mm, that's, a, that's a great question, Sam. So as a catcher, you're sitting in that bottom position for long periods of time. How, how did you tear your meniscus? Was it when you were playing or was it uh, another time? I'm so surprised you knew that. Of course I know that. Yeah, I didn't even I know, know you knew that. what a catcher does. I do know that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> wow. Um, the first one uh, was sliding into second base. Uh, I stole a bag, surprisingly, uh, for a catcher, but um, I stole a bag and my left knee kind of just like accordioned on the base. It kind of got stuck and it kind of compressed. Okay. Um, and then honestly, the second one, I don't even know why. Like, I don't even know how I did it. Um, it just started hurting one day and then I tried to play through it and I finally got an MRI. Um, so, yeah, the second one, I don't really know how. Okay. So when you're in that 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 seated position, you're, you're I mean, and this is a sport now, so we're talking performance. You're, although you're active, you're also somewhat relaxed. Like you're not holding the bottom of a squat. If you would, you would die, you die by the time, you know, you get, you know, 10 minutes later, you, you die in that position. There's, there's somewhat relaxing that's going on at the bottom. And if you have any muscle in your hamstrings or calves, uh, there's a little bit of separation happening at the knee joint at that bottom relaxed position. Um, also, you want to consider the knee really only flexes and extends. It doesn't rotate. It doesn't bend laterally. That all comes from your ankles and your hips. So the best advice I can give you to prevent any future tears, besides the occasional random thing like you're sliding into second base and then you, your, your leg gets caught somewhere, would be to continue to work on, if you're not already, uh, hip, ankle, and foot mobility. Because mm -hmm. whatever they can't do, the ligaments in the knee, the connective tissue in the knee, your meniscus, for example, is going to have to support, right? So if, you're, if your external rotation of your hips or your lateral uh, you know, stability is off, for example, in your hips or your ankles, those things in your knee are going to have to kind of hold steady. And when you're sitting in that bottom position for a long period of time mm -hmm. and you're also active, you're catching balls, you're having to move and jump out of that position – um, you, it's going to put a lot of strain on this. So that would be the number one thing. You asked about diet and stuff, and I'm going to be quite honest with you. What you do with your diet is going to pale in comparison to the mobility mm -hmm. uh, work that I'm recommending for your hips uh, and your ankles. And How feet. often do you do like hip mobility or ankle mobility drills? Um, honestly, not too often. I would you know, say I'm a little bit more of like a meathead in the weight room and mobility is a little bit tougher mm. for me. Um, listening to you guys' podcasts, I've really tried to um, wean off of having a bunch of resistance days. I found that I was doing like four to five resistance days. And when I started listening to you guys, mm -hmm. um, I really only keep it to about two or three now of lifting heavy weights and then try to focus more on mobility. But I definitely could be better in that aspect. You want to live in that 90 90 position. And especially, uh, you know, getting that internal external rotation out of the hips is going to be crucial. I know from being in the catcher's position, then having to react right away, but priming that ahead of time, uh, you know, so your, your body responds appropriately is going to 
going to be a game changer for you, uh, just for st stability and for performance, but also you know to to really help uh, build and fortify around your knees, uh, as well as these ankle mobility drills as well, toe squats. I know. So when you're in that position, your heels are pretty much raised the whole time, correct? Yeah, I would say. I mean, except for if I'm if I'm in like for my secondary position, like runner on base, um, I kind of try to keep my heels on the ground because honestly, mm -hmm. when I when I push my knees forward and get more on my toes, that's when I feel like I feel mm -hmm. um, I'm putting more pressure on the knees. So recently, I've tried to gain kind of more ground contact with my heels and try to you know feel mm -hmm. like I'm mm -hmm. gaining more power from my glutes and hamstrings. Yeah. Um, but you know, you always kind of have to be in that front position and especially for blocking a ball, you're always coming, um, you know, on your toes and, you know, that's such a, you know, um, position yeah. you're in. Combat a great that, one for that. Ankle mobility, bro. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm going to just jump on the, the bandwagon of talking about ankle mobility. That's where, especially with the catcher and what you just said right now is yeah. like the, what will relieve some of that when you're up on your toes is better range of motion in your ankles. So you should live in that combat stretch two, three times a day when you're mm -hmm. watching TV, every chance you can get, um, is getting down there and working on that. The other thing I, I think I'd like to see is probably less volume in training, weight training, two, three times a week max. The other two days is heavy mobility with like catcher drills. I would get down, I would do my mobility work, I would do my hip uh, I would do my hip stuff, my ankle stuff, and then I would do my catcher drills and be driving that home and then only strength training maybe two, three times max a week. And then actually nutrition, there are some things that, uh, you know, Sal's right, it will pale in comparison to what you will do mobility. But, uh, you know, I would play with some things like I, maybe on days when I'm not uh, playing a game and stuff like that, I might run like a lower carb and then, you know, load up when I'm getting ready for a game. So I have more energy and I'm like less worried about, you know, I don't need to be running at 100 percent in my training so I can do like a little bit lower carbohydrate intake and me managing my calories. If you're eating a, a surplus of calories all the time and a lot of carbohydrates that could be. Uh, you know, causing more inflammation going on. And then also tools like, mm. you know, I don't know if you if you mess with things like the infrared, mm -hmm. uh, doing things like that. I don't know if you mess with cryotherapy and, and icing and doing some of that, even though I know icing isn't uh, ideal for, you know, the average person in recovery. It is for somebody who's getting back the next day and yeah. having to play well, a game. Well, something Sal actually helped to suggest for one of my clients who had like chronic uh, inflammation and also swelling issues around the knee was bromelain, I believe. And it was just a natural supplement uh, that actually really worked well uh, for my client when she'd have those days where it would just like blow up on her. Yeah. And the key with bromelain is to take it on an empty stomach. Um, and you could take right. it a couple times a day. But again, if you are constantly pushing back the inflammation, and not addressing what's causing the inflammation, you're not going to help yourself. Maybe right. in the short term, uh, but not in the long term. Do you have Maps Prime Pro, Sam? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, so we're going to give that to you. And Sweet. I, I want Thank you. And you need to do hip, ankle, and foot mobility regularly. Yeah, in fact, I, that. I would even, e even if Every it's, single day, multiple times a day. Yes, and I, I wouldn't right. do tons. Believe it or not, I would not do tons and tons of uh, lower body strengthening exercises like squats. Damn it. In lunges, it's okay to do those, you know, once a week or so. Don't, but don't go crazy with them until you get this under control. Because here's what happens: the more muscle you build in your, especially your hamstrings and calves, the more you're going to get that knee separating effect from sitting at the bottom of a squat. So if you imagine when your knee is really, really bent, right? There's a, and there's a lot of muscle uh, in your calf and hamstrings. As you're pressing on those, it almost wants to separate mm -hmm. the knee a little bit. It's pulling and, a little bit more. Right. So mm -hmm. you get the mobility Sense. under control before you go into trying to build up your legs. Otherwise, you can cause uh, yourself more problems. And the days that you do decide to strength train, this is where somebody I would foam roll and stretch and do mobility afterwards. Mm -hmm. So after, let's say you do squat, lunges, you do some of these traditional leg exercises, don't just walk out the gym after you get this massive pump on them. Then you should spend the time right then doing some foam rolling, then doing some mobility work to stretch it back out again. That'll help out. Yeah, that is awesome. I've really never, you know, truly dove into it, focused on the ankle mob mobility. I know you guys are talking about that so much. So um, that's definitely something I'm going to be focusing on because, uh, you know, 2022 season, that's our next season because we got canceled because of COVID and our 2021 season got canceled. So I got a little bit of time. Um, so hopefully some time to make some uh, good changes. Awesome. awesome. Right, best awesome, of luck Sam. to you, man. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, just uh, really quick, you guys have been, you know, awesome. I listen to you guys every morning. Such a great inspiration. Um, actually kind of inspired me to create my own channel, too. 
Um, it's called The Good Dogs, D-A-W-G-Z, just trying to promote some positivity. Um, so if you guys get a chance, check it out. I don't know if it's uh, allowed to promote on here, but you guys have just inspired me. You're, and you you're guys the first awesome. one, dude. Oh, yeah. I, I, all right. I appreciate you trying, but we'll cut it out. Thanks for coming. <laughs> okay, I know. I, know. I, 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 I assumed you guys would. No, we wouldn't. He's nah, just he's fucking, with, he's fucking with you, Sam. Oh. We, would, we, would, we would cut it out right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wish I could see you guys' beautiful faces. Though. You guys uh, are some sexy guys. Uh, uh, he's, try, he's really you know. trying. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Good <laughs> looking out, Sam. Good talking to you, brother. Thanks, guys. You too. Thanks so much. Yeah, that that those compressive forces at the bottom, especially when you're relaxed. Although he's mostly active, right? Because he's playing, that can cause problems when you're when you got some stability issues Dude, in your hips and ankles. That big is time. one of the toughest positions oh, yeah. in sports uh, to be able to sit in that uh, continually for nine innings, for you know extended innings. Like it's just brutal well, on and, the joints. And you talk about people that really, I mean. He's a person who hip mobility and ankle mobility will oh. do wonders for him. Oh, that's, that's, I mean, that's all performance for him. It's yeah. going to improve his performance tremendously. And yeah. I'm excited that he says that he hasn't focused on that at all because that mm -hmm. will make a big difference. I Tremendous. Mean, it, it help, I mean, it helps you know majority of our clients because most people need need work in that area. But you have somebody who is who's you know working at the elite level down in that position, mm -hmm. ankle and hip mobility. Is totally. I, you know, I tell you, if you want to see, if you want to look at high level athletes with tremendous, uh, especially hip mobility and even ankle mobility. And when I say mobility, I mean, of course, range of motion, but strength and control and these ranges of motion. Look at catchers and look at goalies for hockey. It's mind-blowing what they can do with their hips and their ankles, especially with the catchers with the ankles. And you got to look at them because they're the ones that are able to do it long into their career. If you don't have those things and then you play high school, college, you get tons of problems and it usually hits you in the knees. Our next caller is Jasmine from Michigan. Hey, Jasmine, how can we help you? Hi, Sal. Um, so I recently lost 130 pounds. Um, wow. Over yeah, the past congratulations. Year and a half. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm trying to get back into, I guess, a normal lifestyle without gaining back a lot of the body fat that I lost. And I know there's a lot of science behind, like, everybody gains back the weight. So I was wondering what your opinions are on that and what I can do to get back to a maintenance sort of eating style and training. Oh, this, Excellent. This pairs really well with the question we just answered. Two yeah. people ago. Yeah. So uh, first oh. off, congratulations. Uh, that is tremendous. That's such a hard thing Thank to you. do. So the fact that you actually did it, uh, I mean, that's a testament to, uh, to, to you. Uh, I need to ask you a few more questions before I can answer uh, this properly. Um, I need to find out how did you lose the weight? Was this, did you get gastric bypass procedure? Did you have... Uh, did you do it through exercise and diet? Like, what were the things you did to get there? It was all diet and exercise. I started calorie counting and then just act, actually being active. Okay, cool. All right, so so uh, I'm going to say something that might sound a little bit uh, like I'm not answering your question, but just bear with me, okay? okay? The most important thing you can focus on to prevent yourself from gaining weight has nothing to do with the physiological things that are going to happen to your body as you watch your calories and exercise and stuff like that. Those are all the mechanistic things that you can work on. And I have no doubt in my mind that you'll be able to do them because you've actually done them already and lost a lot of weight. The thing I'm going to recommend that you focus on the most is working on the behavioral aspect of it, the emotional aspect, essentially the mental part of all of this. So I highly recommend, if you haven't already, investing in a therapist or somebody who specializes in working with the behavioral aspects of not just the weight gain that happened prior to your weight loss, but now what happens now that you've lost the weight. In my experience working with people who've lost a lot of weight, it, they've usually used food as a way to self-medicate. So now what they've done is they've removed that way of self-medicating, and through sheer discipline, they're able to lose the weight. But at some point, all those reasons why maybe you had that weight on you in the first place start to creep back in. And so you can have the best plan, the best workout, the best everything in terms of what to do. But if you don't address that, it's going to be very, very, very challenging, if not uh, impossible. Uh, does that resonate okay. with you? Yes, it does. Okay, excellent. Mm. All right, now let's talk about the the, the mechanisms that you're going to uh, work on. Um, however many cal what, how many calories you're consuming right now? Now that you've lost the weight, what do you? What's your maintenance at? That's what I can't figure out necessarily. I go between eating like around 1600 a day just because I'm not hungry to like around 2800 a day. So it just varies. Do you have any idea of what that would average out to per week? 
Um, I haven't done the calculations, but probably around like 2,200 or so. Okay. It's actually not bad. No, that's not bad. It's not bad at all considering you've dropped down 130 pounds. Now, now let me ask you another question. What does your exercise look like daily? Are you doing tons and tons of activity every day? Um, so I have a rebounder trampoline and when I'm bored, I just kind of, um, jog on it for a couple hours a day, honestly. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure if that cardio is influencing what I'm doing at all. What about training? Are you uh, are you following any of the MAPS programs right now? I just finished Anabolic. Okay. Actually. Excellent. And okay. what did you see with Anabolic? Um, my muscles definitely got a lot stronger. I like managed to do, I guess, body recomp in the last year. So it definitely just solidified everything I had been doing. Oh, very cool. Uh, very, very cool. Okay, so you're doing two hours of cardio a day in order to be able to consume uh, 2,200 calories a day. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, in terms of sustainability, in my experience, it's going to be very difficult to maintain that uh, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and beyond because it's a lot of structured, dedicated activity. I would right. recommend trying to make your daily life more active. It's a much more sustainable way of doing things. So maybe getting a step counter, seeing if you can – Increase your steps uh, just throughout the day in your daily routines, um, and then try to replace the rebounding with something like that. Um, Adam asked you the question about uh, resistance training. Stay on that. Nothing positively affects the metabolism like building strength and building muscle. Um, so I would stay on that. Get your body strong. Get your body to want to build muscle. It'll make it so that you don't need to worry about burning so many calories manually on a daily basis. And even though I can't, I you know I'm not I'm not working with you, and I haven't seen your how you train inside the gym. Uh, my suggestion would be um, to make sure that you are focused on strength over burning. Right. So a lot of times when I have a client that has a, a big weight loss goal. It's all about moving and burning mm -hmm. calories. A lot of the messaging that you see in social media and even on TV around weight loss is all about burning, burning, burning. And so a lot of times when my clients would come in the gym, that's how they approach their exercise, their, their sets, their reps, their weight when they're training is they're trying to keep moving and weight. Take some rest periods to settle down and actually your goal should be can I you know can I add five pounds to my bench press? Can I add 10 pounds to my squat and really kind of reframe your thought process of going into the gym and exercising, it's more about building strength, building muscle. That's what's going to help speed the metabolism up. That's what's going to allow you to be able to increase your calorie intake without putting on body fat. And so I'm not sure what it looks like right now for you, but I know in my experience mm -hmm. with clients, a lot of times when they're trying to lose weight, it's all about moving mm -hmm. and burning. And I got to re I got to reframe what that should look like for them. And it's like, hey, when we go to the gym, I'm not concerned about you, you know, moving around like crazy and in short rest periods, you know, rest, rest for a solid two minutes between these sets and let's try and increase that strength and let's increase the weight that you're moving. Okay. Okay. Jasmine, do you mind if I ask you um, a couple personal questions? Yeah. Um, so when before you got on this journey um, and you were 130 pounds heavier than you are now, what were the what, what what was the food doing for you, or what were you eating the food for? In other words, was it uh, did you find yourself eating because you were bored or sad or anxious? What was that food helping you with? It was probably a combination of all three, honestly. Okay. And what have you replaced the food with? Uh, exercising. Okay. So what you've done is you've, okay, so you've medicated with food before and now you're using exercise to medicate. Does that sound, uh, am I saying that accurately? I would say so. Okay. Yes. Now this is actually a, a strategy that I would use with clients. So when they would have, uh, like you did with food, where it was a way to self-medicate either, you know, sadness, depression, anxiety, whatever. And I would actually have them replace it with exercise because it's an easy transition. However, you can't stay there. Okay. Mm. Right. Be because using exercise in that way is also developing a unhealthy or bad relationship with exercise. And it's also totally not sustainable. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So this is why I, I really, again, I want to stress this, work with somebody who is uh, experienced and an expert in this field. And I'm telling you, the people that I've worked with, and I worked with quite a bit, uh, quite a few people who've lost over 100 pounds, the ones who were successful were the ones that did exactly what I'm talking about. The ones mm -hmm. who didn't do what I'm talking about, 
I, not a single one of them was successful long term. Yeah. I th- mm. Yeah, I think you're coming in with the right attitude of trying to find your maintenance. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the biggest struggle with somebody that's lost a lot of weight that I'm uh, helping coach is that temptation of wanting to burn all the calories and make sure their activity levels are really high and they're doing high intensity things. Uh, so, you know, the advice I, I can only just echo uh, trying to sort of refocus on just building your body up and, and getting stronger and focusing on the metrics. So even something like a powerlifting program, something like that, you know, might be something to, to look into. But, uh, you know, once you dial all that in and, uh, you know, you're utilizing food to just, you know, fuel the energy going into the workouts, that's a healthy place to and be. And Jasmine, I want you to know that uh, I want to commend you too. You're kicking ass right now. The fact that you've, you've dropped that down, the fact that you're actually eating 1,800 to 2,000 plus calories, the fact that you're aware that most people put the weight back on, the fact that you're aware that you are using food to medicate, you're already ahead of a lot of people and in the right direction. So you're doing a really good job. Very, very mm-hmm. good Thank job. You. And in, in, in care, take care of yourself like someone you care about. Always think of that to yourself. Remember that, that you are somebody that you care about and you want to treat yourself uh, as such. That'll always guide you in the right direction. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for calling in, Jasmine. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. That's a, you know, you're absolutely right, Adam. Uh, the vast majority of people that were in her situation don't even get close to where she's at. Not even aware. Yeah. Not even aware. And she's, she's uh, I would say, more than halfway there. But again, I can't stress, when you finally get there, you're not done. There's another phase you need to move to that can be just as challenging as the previous phase. And, and, and it's necessary in order to maintain what you've already accomplished. Right. Otherwise, if exercise becomes your new drug, uh, and uh, we all know that uh, very well, what that turns into, mm-hmm. um, either A, it can become bad in and of itself, or B, you eventually get sick of that drug and you drop it very quickly and go back to your previous drug, which was you know, well, food. Nobody yeah. ever thinks that you can, you can abuse exercise and fitness. Right. It's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's a right, good thing. Right. It's healthy. I'm exercising, but you absolutely can't, especially if you don't handle the root cause. Mm-hmm. If you got in that situation because... And I love that you went that direction with her because that's what's common, I think, with most people is that's your outlet. Your outlet is, oh, I'm going to go in the gym and exercise. And, you know, a lot of times it gets people to their goal, but long term, eventually that stuff surfaces. And then you that's where the that's where the binge and the fall off the wagon and then the, all the weight comes back on because you never dealt with what was really causing the weight gain in the first place. Yeah, I'd say the first the fir- my career, uh, the, I worked with three initially, I worked with three people who lost a lot of weight. And they later on gained it back and, and failed. And it was so, for me, it was such an eye-opening thing. And I remember thinking, like, what can I possibly do? And so I had this completely different strategy moving on in my career where when somebody would come to me and would want to lose 100 pounds or 80 pounds or more, um, what part of the structure was that they work with a therapist and that I work with your therapist. When we did that, the success rate was much higher because then it was, we're really working on the root. And I'm not a, you know, I was, I'm a trainer, right? And I can work with food relationships. I can work with that kind of stuff. But I wanted an expert uh, who was a therapist or a counselor who could work with that person yeah, on get the to side. the heart of it. And it was so much more effective. Our next caller is Joseph from California. Hey, Joseph, how can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I just had a quick question. You know, us tall guys out here don't get a lot of love or you don't get to hear much about how to progress in lifts and really uh, move past those plateaus. So what I'm wondering, I'm 6'4". I've been working out for about 10 years. I followed uh, Mike Matthews, bigger, bigger, leaner, stronger for, I don't know, let's say about three or four years, really taught me about that strength phase. But uh, I just, I need some tips on how to increase my squat. I've been really stuck at, you know, always getting a little bit past that 225 mark, but then coming back down and, um, you know, I, a reference I heard you guys make was in regards to, you know, you're running with a bum leg. And when you put that intensity or add that weight, you're just running faster with that bum leg. So, um, I guess my question is, you know, how, and what are some tips to progress uh, for us taller guys, six, three, uh, on our squats? 
Mm-hmm. Well, I love questions like this. This is, I, I'm with you too. There is no love for us guys that are over six three and above, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys have such a hard it, life. What was you guys? And yeah. I try and remind. I'm trying to remind Sal and Justin all the time that the way that they measure strength is weight over distance. So guys like you and I, even though we're only moving two twenty five, we're like twice as strong as Sal and Justin are squatting <laughs> double the weight. So uh, just this is, this is so, great. So yeah. just remember that, Joe. You and yeah. I are much stronger than these guys that are doing you know three four hundred pounds. More. Compact power. Over yeah. there. Range, so, you know, range of motion. Range that's of motion, that's yeah, exactly yeah. right. So, Joseph, uh, yeah. what do you? Okay, so what is? You said you were doing bigger, leaner, uh, stronger before. What are you doing now? What does your workouts look like now? Yeah, so about in 2017, 2018, I I found you guys through Mike Matthews. He recommended this podcast, and I just fell in love. I did uh, first program I bought was anabolic. Absolutely loved it. Bought aesthetic. Absolutely loved it. Um, I did performance after that. Absolutely loved it. I ran anabolic probably about two times. Um, I have performance and strong. I started off on strong, but you know, I was getting a little, I uh, felt overtraining. I was sleeping bad. I, I was just really just after my workouts, I felt more tired than energized. So, uh, I kind of was in the strength phase for the last about say six weeks. So then I moved back into, I just jumped right back into aesthetic, uh, phase two to just go into more of the, the pump phase or whatnot, just to give my body a break from that strength. Okay. And how are your, you know, your, your focus on the squat primarily? Is that what you really want to improve? 100%. You know, okay. I, I want to get to that 315, but I want to do it right. I don't want to just keep hobbling on this leg and then injuring myself and having to go back to, you know, 135 to 185 to 225 and so forth. Got it. Now, how did your, str- did your squat strength go up uh, going through MAPS anabolic and aesthetic and performance? 100 percent. i could say my overall body and strength i had some major transformations you know like i said i was doing beer leaner stronger which is primarily focused on just strength training the whole time a 46 rep range but i just noticed huge results by doing the full body three to four days a week and just uh, giving myself that rest and recovery but also uh the programming was just awesome how it phased into each phase you know from a strength phase to a high hyper, hyper um, you know a, a bodybuilding yeah. phase and then yeah how did you do with the consistency of those frequency builders? Uh, the trigger sessions, for instance, in anabolic and the mobility sessions in performance? You know, for anabolic, I loved the trigger sessions. I actually do them um, even, even with aesthetic and performance, how much I love those. Uh, do, you know, the air squats and band exercises. I, I've been really focusing on my chin ups and pull ups and notice a lot of uh, gains in my arms, mm-hmm. but. Um, for performance, the mobility uh, trigger sessions, they were, you know, a lot of new movements to memorize and, and you kind of go back in old habits when you uh, don't have too much time and, and really need to probably focus yeah. more on those mobility sessions. Well, mm. the way the way you would get stronger if you're tall is the same way somebody who's short would get stronger. And, and what I mean by that is it really boils down to the individual. Okay. So, um, number one, I would look at uh, mobility issues and see if those are causing you problems. Typically, tall guys, uh, they, they may lean forward a lot when they do a squat. They might need True. greater ankle mobility mm-hmm. in order to perform a proper squat, typically. So I would look at things like uh, you know work on ankle mobility yeah. quite a bit. So that's a very common mm-hmm. one. Yeah. And then the, here's the other thing, okay? If your goal is to build more strength and you, with your level of experience, okay, you, now you can start to incorporate some more advanced techniques. And I don't mean advanced in terms of more intensity and more volume. I mean advanced in terms okay. of like variable, variable resistance. resistance yes. Yeah, so I would use uh, resistance bands uh, on my barbell when I'm doing a squat, either assisting me or adding resistance so that the bottom of the squat is lighter and the top of the squat is heavier. Mm-hmm. You can also use chains uh, in your squats. You can also start to do where you pause your reps. Yes. So if your sticking point is, you know, right at 90 degrees, um, I would yep. hold a squat there for three seconds and then come up at the top. You can also experiment with a type of a squat called bottom position squats, where you get under a bar that's already at the bottom of a squat and then bring it up rather than starting at the top, lowering and coming back up. These techniques are really, really good at getting strength gains go up. So start looking in, the, in that direction, aside from the mobility. Well, I'm, I'm going to go in a couple different directions. One, uh, so I, you know, I don't know how much you've followed my journey, Joseph, like as far as uh, you know, strength building and where I was with competing to where I, when I focused on mobility. So where I'm currently at right now, like uh, my uh, when I was competing, uh, I was squatting over 400 pounds. Um, obviously, I had a, a great physique on stage, 
but I had I had really poor mobility, and that was a big focus. So I transitioned out of competing into becoming this like really trying to become this really mobile guy. Like at six three, be, I wanted to be able to sit like ass to grass squat comfortably, not just get there, but be down in that position comfortably. And so I kind of let go of like, okay, I'm obviously probably not going to be squatting 400 pounds. Let's get back to see how deep I can get. Did lots of mobility work. And to where I'm at currently today is I'm probably squatting somewhere around 350-ish is probably kind of my peak where I'm at right now. But it's ass to grass. And my legs are bigger than they've they've ever been at where I'm at right now. So even though I was squatting more weight before when I was competing – I, w I didn't have nowhere near the depth in my squat. And so that's another thing, too, is to be clear on like what you really want. Do you want to squat more weight so you can build your quads and your legs more? Or do you want to squat more weight just so you can squat more weight? So I, I, I had to ask myself that and like let go of like, OK, so I'm squatting less weight now, but I'm moving the weight at, at a greater range of motion, which is resulting in bigger, more defined legs than I had before. So that's one. The other thing I would tell you it, that I benefited from personally a lot was actually our power lift program. So especially if okay. you're yeah, especially if you're very focused on on like building your squat up, uh, the way that program is written, it is written to to get your strength up in the big lifts. Mm -hmm. So it's programmed very very well. It's very different to how I've ever trained my body. I've always trained like a bodybuilder or like an athlete. I had never mm -hmm. trained like a power lifter to try and get strong in my lifts. That was my first time ever really doing that, and I saw big strength gains. And for, obviously, guys like us who have been lifting for a long time, you know, seeing 10 or 20 pounds go on the bar is a big deal, and I was seeing yeah. that in, in my big lifts from that program. So that would be my other suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have MAPS Powerlift, Joseph? I do. I do. I have a ton of your programs. I have Prime, Prime Pro. It's, it's really just figuring out those mechanics and making sure I'm doing the right mechanics before I add that intensity or add yeah. those different variations. And, um, I think focusing more on the 90, 90, I've been doing that for the last year and a half. I've, I've felt a lot better. I used to get a, an impingement in you know, my lower back on my left side. And ever since I started doing 90, 90, cause I'm sitting at a desk all day. Um, it, it's, it's really helped me out and then combat stretch and, and just been incorporating those on a very frequent basis. Uh, when I'm sitting down wrestling with the kids or whatnot, Hell yeah, Joe. Are you are you in the private forum too or no? No, I'm not. I'm okay, not. all right. Well, we're gonna set you up with that. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Doug give you access to the forum, and then Thank what you. I want you to do is I actually want you to video yourself squatting, because right now we're okay. all speculating on ways that we can kind of help you out in that area. I, I might be able to see the sure. way you're squatting right now and point out something more specific, mm -hmm. uh, and that a lot of people that's how they use the forum. So there's uh, besides. Uh, the three of us being in there to kind of help and coach people along. We've also uh, got a ton of other coaches and professionals in there, and everybody loves to share like a, a video of them exercise. And then we'll, you'll get critiques from everybody, including ourselves. Um, so we want, and since you own almost everything, let us hook you up with that. Yeah. yeah. And then one last. Sorry, you know what? One, one, sorry Joe. One, one last thing, um, I, and I can't stress this enough, especially with people who are tall. There's a lot of value in split stance exercises, okay? Mm -hmm. so Bulgarian split stance squats. Huge. Lunges, uh, either back step or front step. Um, unilateral mm -hmm. exercises, step ups, uh, or single leg toe touches or deadlifts. Tremendous value for everybody, especially for tall people. Tall people seem to get so much value from doing those split stance exercises. In my experience, I've seen... Uh, some of my well, taller it completely clients. addresses the, any instability. I mean, yeah. there's no way around it. And so I think that's great advice uh, to really kind of dive into that as well and then see how that applies, uh, you know, back to your backloaded squats. Exactly. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I, ever since I started listening to you guys, I did the split stance, um, Bulgarian squats. I, I built two uh, step-up boxes, been doing those, and then performance really got me into more of those single leg movements. So I did notice some gains there, but – really just want to focus on the big four and squats have always been an Achilles heel of mine. So I do appreciate everything and I do have chains so I can start doing those and I do really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no awesome, problem, man. You're kicking ass. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, man, he's, he's, <laughs> he's dialed in. Dude. Yeah, he's, he's got all the program. I yeah. mean, he, he's doing, I think that's just a case of like you wanting more sooner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's obviously, if he's ran through most of Mike's stuff, he's now got, he's got damn near every one of our programs gone through, seen phenomenal results already. Like, right. you know, I, I think that's something too. And I, I know you guys, we all probably wrestle with this is that, mm. 
you know, after you've been lifting for a really long time, uh, those those gains are yeah. few and far between. It starts to get a little harder. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I mean, a, a five pound increase today is like a I big know. is a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Or a, a, an inch more of mobility. I mean, mm -hmm. so you know, after you've got those beginner gains and you've seen great results from see, you know going through a few new programs you've never followed. It's tough to see the like major gains, you know, years down the road. And you and you know, you are right. It's one of the the only places in life where being tall might be a disadvantage, right? <laughs> it's when you're doing barbell squats. Right. right. So look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so you can come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. We also have a lot of free guides and free written information. So we have guides on how to get a better squat, how to build your legs or your arms or your midsection, how to burn more body fat. Go check them all out. Go to Mind Pump Free. Dot com. They're all free. They cost nothing. And then again, and then also you can find us all on social media. Instagram is our favorite place to be. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Wrong. You can look at, you can speculate on what's going to happen in the future and how it's going to suck. No, no, no. Don't do that. Just literally take the energy, it's just energy, and, and just shift it about three feet over here and start looking at how you can make this work for you. It's just 